Chelsea and I'm back with another video and today's video is going to be more on the serious not so joyful kind of sad but reality side um as the title says I lost my mom recently it was June 10th 2019 she passed away and these past few weeks have just been like a roller coaster ride and we're all gonna experience this if you haven't already one day so i feel like this is something that can either help you or help somebody you know that's going through this so if you're interested in hearing what i have to say and my viewpoints and just how i'm feeling just that's that's it. It. um this video is going to be for people who have lost a parent or if you know somebody who has lost a parent this is just kind of like an outlet slash I understand type video and for those who don't who haven't lost a parent you just want to know how it is I mean so let's get into it so like I said on June 10th 2019 was the absolute worst day of my life I mean like you go through things in life and you think they're bad like you may lose you might get fired from a job you may fail a test. You may not get into a program that you wanted to get into. You might break up with your boyfriend or your girlfriend. You might have to move. You know, all these things happen. You might get a speeding ticket. You might lose some money. But I promise you, nothing in this world compares to the pain you feel when you lose a parent. That pain is just, it's undescribable. And it's unimaginable. It's un believable like <laughs> so a lot of people well it hasn't even been a month yet she passed june 10th and today is july 2nd it hasn't even been a full month but i tell you it has been a roller coaster ride it has been a roller coaster ride and people will say you experience five stages of grief and i'm just like no ma'am like there's no it's not a set okay denial accepting forgiving no 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 it's not like that like one minute i can be happy one minute i'll be sad one minute i'll be joyful one minute i'll be angry it's just it's undescribable it's honestly the hardest thing ever especially if you're close to your parent that passed it's so weird because you're with this person you have this person in your life from the day you are born. So they have been by your side since day one as a baby, okay? And you know your mom and your dad, they're going to have your back through whatever, whether you're right or wrong. You could be wrong, so wrong, and they'll still have your back. And, you know, they may defend you in public and correct you in private, but you know for a fact they love you. They're going to give you what's real. They're going to have your best interest in heart. You don't have to doubt their loyalty, their love. It's just pure, unconditional love. And when you have that every single day, and it's just snatched away from you, baby, it's like, it's a, it's a shock to your system. It's literally like, and I honestly don't even know if I have understood or accepted everything that it entails so like i said it's only been a little over um three weeks now and i'm still adjusting and i know i'm going to be adjusting for the rest of my life because you know you may think that oh you'll get over it or you know time heals all wounds and that's not true i just don't ever think i'll ever get over the fact that my mom died and I'm only 25, I don't have any kids, I'm not married, and I feel like she's gonna miss out on so much, and that just makes me so sad, because I'm like, oh my God, she's not gonna be there to help me raise my kids. So when I have my first baby, who's gonna help me? Like, <laughs> you know, of course you have like the internet and books and stuff like that, but you want you want your mom's traditions, like you wanna know what she did with you to do with your child. You want those things just passed down, and now I don't have that. And it, it makes me sad, but, you know, I try to look at the positive side of things and not get too in my feelings and not let myself go into depression thinking about it. But, um, yeah, so like I said, it's the hardest thing you can ever think to experience. And if you've lost somebody, you know exactly what I'm saying. Like, it's a 
burning feeling in your stomach it literally physically it burns and like your heart feels broken nothing in this nothing up to this point i just think i was mad before or sad or in my feelings or i had a heartbreak nothing compares to this when i'm asleep i'm thinking about it when i'm up i'm thinking about it when i'm eating when i'm taking a shower when i'm at work when i'm Watching TV, any song, you know, I relate to her. And it's just, ah, it's so frustrating. And I'm not going to go into details about what happened or what with that situation. But I, she was sick and she was in a lot of pain. So one thing that helps me kind of cope or keep myself sane is knowing that she's not hurting anymore, knowing that she's pain free and she's not, you know, just miserable every day. Because it got to a point now where she was taking so much medicine and she was always in pain. It was hard to see her like that. And I was already sad from that. Like I already was in my feelings because my mom, who was very active, very much into volunteering and into our lives and just helping out everyone in the community, Went from this busy person to just having to be in the bed or in the room all the time. It's very sad. And I thought I was sad then, but that, losing my mom and her actually passing away, there's nothing compared to it. And so the first few days after she died um, were some of the hardest slash easiest days. And I say they were the hardest because, of course, you get the news that, the, you know, your loved one is passed and they're not here anymore. And it hurts. And it hurts like hell. You don't want to eat. You can't sleep. You can't stop crying. It's like a feeling. It's like a, your heart is in your throat. Your stomach is in your throat. Everything just feels weird. Like you're out of your body. It is the worst feeling. And it's just such a sad feeling. It's just sadness. It's just pure sadness. But then at the same time, you you have adrenaline going because you have to plan a funeral. If you choose to have one, you have to plan a wake. Um, like us, we're not from Arkansas where we live now. All of our family is from Pennsylvania. So we had to try to make arrangements for out-of-town families to come into town and get them situated, find places to eat. We're going to have the repast there. Um, at the funeral, pick out a casket. You have to pick up. Like I said, your adrenaline is going. So even though you're sad, you have this burst of energy because you know you have to get this done. You know how you know you got to do something, you get it done? It's like we have to plan a funeral. And so for our situation, we live in Arkansas. And and it's just me, my mom, my dad, and my brother here. So we don't have a lot of family or outside help. You know, everybody else lives states away. They're a thousand miles away. So we're having to plan the funeral, the wake, all by ourselves, all while we're grieving. It was just a test of our strength, a test of our strength, a test of willpower. Because, but you're numb. Like, you don't feel anything. Like, it's just so weird. It's like, you're numb. You don't feel anything. And you're sad. And you don't know what's going on. You just know you have to get it done. So, me and my dad, my brother were at the funeral home. You know, you got to pick out a casket. And then when you're picking out the casket and you're picking out flowers and all of that, you're trying to keep that person what they would want in mind. So, like, you don't want to pick out something that's, like, what you would want. It's not your funeral. You're trying to keep them in mind. And one thing that did help us, which is really amazing, um, before my mom passed, I think she kind of knew, like deep down, her time was coming, as sad as that sounds, because we have ended up finding a notebook where she wrote down her final wishes. I wouldn't say final wishes because she wrote down pretty much her funeral service and how she wanted to go. She wrote down songs she wanted to have played. She wrote down the colors she wanted to wear, the jewelry she wanted to be buried with. She wrote down poems she wanted to be read, um, prayers, all of that. So she helped us kind of by guiding us. But having to pick out your mom or your dad's casket, it's so sad. Like, 
in the meantime, <laughs> you're trying to do all of this and still live. Not live, but still, you have to eat. You have to take a shower. And you got to still clean up and clean after yourself. And if you have pets, you still have to feed them. And like I said, family's coming in from out of town. Um, you're getting nonstop calls and text messages and emails and Facebook messages and people stopping by, dropping off food and people are constantly asking you what happened, what happened, what happened. <sighs> Tiring is not the word. It's just a weird, it's just a weird time and it's just not a fun time. And it's sad because you're like, usually mom take care of this or dad takes care of this. And then you don't have them no more. It's just like, it's like your parents prepare you for everything in life except for how to live when they're not here, you know. And trying to plan all of that and grieve and keep a straight face and not cry 24-7 is so hard. And, you know, I'm the type of person where I, I always look up things and Google and YouTube things. So I was like YouTube and how to prepare for a funeral, how to grieve properly, how to get past a death. And it's like, there's no way to do it. There's no way except for your way. Well, somebody else then may not work for you and vice versa. So what I also did, I got me a journal. I just started writing down, like, my thoughts and my feelings as an outlet. Um, I got this from Burlington. It was seven dollars and it says I can do everything through him who gives me strength and it's Philippians 413. So I write down everything in this journal. Like my thoughts about her, when she crosses my mind. Um I kinda talk to her through this journal. Like it's weird. So that's one ways that I cope. I just feel like she can read it. I don't know. Maybe she can. Maybe she can. I don't know. But yeah, so writing in the journal it definitely helps me out. Um, and it's like a roller coaster. Like I said, it's like a roller coaster ride. Literally one minute, I'll be smiling and I'm enjoying that moment. Okay, that moment right then, I'm okay. And maybe 30 minutes later, I will be on the floor, balled up, crying my eyes out because I didn't saw something. And it reminded me of her. And you cannot hold back. Like, and it's hard to deal with. And, and people, you know, will message you and they'll they'll text you and they'll call you and say, oh, it'll be okay. Things will get easier. You'll get over it. It's your mom, okay? It's your mom. It's your dad. Like, that's not something you can just say, oh, it'll be okay. It's like, you know, I don't think I've ever really lost in my life was my pet. Um, my dog, yeah, had like 14 years, and eventually that pain subsided, and I still miss him, and I still love him, but that pain definitely went away. When it's your parent, it's a special bond that you have, and it just will not go away, and everything is going to remind you of them. I could walk down the steps, and I just think about how she used to walk. I could be fixing a banana, not fixing a banana, but eating a banana or drinking something. Like, dang, she loved bananas, or dang, she loved ice water. It's just, like, such a sad time, and you really understand what type of strength you have. Because I never imagined being 25 years old, I would lose my mom. Like, you know your parents are going to die one day, and everybody just visions they'll be old, you know, just short, old, walking slow, just to live their life. And I just feel like she was robbed. Like, she was only 50. She didn't have any grandkids. That's all she ever wanted was grandkids. She didn't see me and my brother get married. And it's just a whole, it's a void. And it's, it's just so, it's just, like I said, it's just so sad. And you try to think positively, you think that, okay, God won't put too much on me that I can't handle. You know, God's there to help me and to walk me through this and to get me through this and give me strength. And he can give you strength, but he can't heal that void. He can't fill that void to me. It's just, oh, my mom back. You know, you want your mom, you want your dad back. You don't, you don't want to hear all of that. Oh, it'll be okay. You know, it'll get easier. Because eventually when the funeral is over, and the wake is over and everybody goes back to their normal lives and out of town people go back home and reality sets in that was the hardest time so that's why i say that first week 
it was the saddest, but it was the easiest. I had so much distracting me. I had family members there. People were calling and texting and emailing and Facebooking. And when all that stopped, because literally after the funeral, people just stopped talking to you. They just don't message you. They don't call you. And if they do, it's just about some nonsense. You know what I'm saying? They don't really think that, okay, they are still grieving. They're still dealing with their loss. They're they're back to their normal lives. So they're like, okay, funeral's over. They're getting over it. But honestly, this is the hardest time. It's the loneliest time. Because, like I said, everybody goes back to their normal lives and their daily routines. And you are having to find a new routine. You're having to find a new normal for you. Okay? And trying to find all that... It's just hard. And it's just heartbreaking. Nothing feels the same. Um, nothing will ever feel the same again. It's just going to be something that you got to get used to. And I speak to people who've lost somebody. You know, I'm not the first person to lose a mom. And I speak to people who've you know lost their parent or mom or dad. And they're like, you know, you never get over it. You'll never be the same person. You just learn how to cope. You learn how to live with that loss. And that is so scary to me, knowing that I'll never have that same smile again. And I'll be like this until I see her again. But it's like, that's the price you pay when you love somebody. When you truly love somebody and they're ripped out from your life, it's, it's, it's okay to feel that way. You know what I'm saying? It's like... They say grief is the ultimate price you pay for love. And it's true. When you truly love somebody and they pass away, it's like somebody's ripping your heart out and stomping on it, putting it back in, ripping it back out, stomping on it, ripping it out, stomping on it, splitting it up, cutting it up, stabbing it. It is horrible. It's horrible. And then the only time you kind of get peace is when you sleep. But when I sleep, sometimes I dream about her. And it's like I wake up and I'm like, damn, that wasn't even real. So, it's an array of emotions. It, it just comes and goes. It hits me and then sometimes I'm okay and then I'm back sad and then I'm okay and I'm back sad. And it's just, I wouldn't wish this pain on my worst enemy. I really wouldn't. And also seeing your family kind of not fall apart, but you see... How the loss not only affects you, but it affects everybody else who loved that person. Whether it be your sibling, or the other parent, or your grandparents. Um, it's just wow. Like, and you gain a whole new perspective for life. Things that used to matter, do not matter anymore. Like, things you used to get mad about, you can care. To, you can give two cents about like you just don't care and you can't care because it's like i don't like i used to have bad road rage like really bad road rage and since my mom died i just don't care no more like whatever or i'm at work and a customer gets mad at me whatever like or one of my close friends or somebody makes me mad it's like whatever and there's nothing and I honestly feel this way. There's nothing that nobody can do that can amount to the amount of pain I feel from losing my mom. So whatever you do to me, I'm not going to be hurt by it because I'm already hurt. Like, if you had different levels of hurt, I'm already at the bottom. So whatever you do is going to be better than what happened. You know what I'm saying? That makes sense. So your whole perspective on the life changes. And you also learn to appreciate the small things. Like, you appreciate company. You appreciate people calling you and texting you and saying hey just checking on you you want to go grab something to eat you want to go get a drink you want to talk you want to go for a walk you appreciate things so much more because you realize life is just so short and you hear that phrase all the time but when you experience a loss that's close to you you realize life is short and nobody knows when their time is coming nobody knows anything it's just excuse me you take it day by day you try to honor that person and what i'm doing to cope pretty much is i cry when i want to cry 
when I feel sad and I know it's coming, I'll go to the bathroom and cry. I'll go to my car and cry. I'd have, <laughs> I'd be driving and crying so much now. People probably think, girl, what is wrong with you? I'll be crying and, gr and driving so much because when I'm alone, it's when it hits me. Because I'll I'll be driving and I'm like talking to her and I try to talk to her like, girl, I guess it's so so did. But honestly, I just makes myself even more sad because like, she can't respond. She can't say nothing. It's like I'm trying to psych myself out, you know what I'm saying? So that's really sad. But that's how I get through it. I cry a lot. I, like I said, I write down a lot of information in my journal. Um, I haven't got to the point where I can't I can't play videos yet of her. I can't watch videos of her. I can look at her pictures. Like she's <laughs> have a little bookmark of her, a bookmark of her right here. Um, I can look at pictures and things like that, but I can't play any videos. If I hear her voice, I remember my dad played a video about a week ago of her and the dogs, and I just lost it. I had to leave because. Knowing you'll never hear that voice again, it's just like a reminder. It's like a punch to the gut. Like, ugh. It's just, ugh. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Um, I have gone to the cemetery to see her. Because, you know, I don't want to leave her out there. You know, I also feel that way. Like, when it's raining and stuff, I'm like, dang, mommy out there by herself. And I know she's really not out there. I know her soul has gone on to heaven. But it's like... It's just weird. It's just like, dang, I just want to see what heaven looks like. I just wish somebody could just send me a picture or send me a video of her in heaven. And I think I'd be a little bit more at peace. You know what I'm saying? I think I'll just be more content knowing she's okay. Because all you can do is wonder. Like, I wonder what she's doing. I wonder how she's feeling. I wonder if she's okay. I wonder if she's happy. You know? And then I also, kind of what helps me is when I kind of get in that deep dark place i'm like my mom is watching me and i know she doesn't want me to cry i know she doesn't want me sitting here sulking and beating myself up so i try to put a strong face on for her because i know she's always watching me now but it's like those are things that i do that i have done these last three weeks it's only been a month since she's passed and it's hard i um went back to work and that's helped. Went back to work last week. That's helped get my mind off of things. I have a side um, hustle. So me trying to kind of work on that has helped. Just staying busy has helped. Um, going to her house. Laying in her bed. Um, using her products like her hair combs and her perfume. And... <sighs> looking at her clothes and smelling her shirts it feels safe it feels warm it feels comforting but it's bittersweet everything's bittersweet because the minute you feel safe and you're like oh that's my mom's smit scent it hits you that she's not coming back so it's like walking a fine line because you can be happy and content and then you could just lean a little to the right and you're back in a sunken place because you like it hits you that your mom's buried six feet underground in a cemetery her soul is in heaven and you're not gonna see her again aside from pictures and videos you're physically not gonna be able to hug her see her kiss her something major happens in your life you can't call her it's just like you want to pull your hair out, but then it's like, it's life. I'm not the only person going through this. I'm not the only person that's going to ever go through this. A million people have gone through this before me, and a million people will go through this after me. And it's part of life, and it's the worst part, I think, of life is when people die. Because it just hurts. It just hurts, and... All I can do from this point forward is just try to be a good person. Well, I'm a good person, but continue to be a good person. Spread love and just do things that will make her proud. Um, give back, of course. Help others when I can. And just overall, just be, a, you know, just be that shoulder and just be there for people. You know what I'm saying? Because a smile and spreading love is free. 
you know, life is short, and you, when you do die, you want to be remembered as a good person, a good, loving, kind person. You don't want to leave here, and everybody hates you, you know? Like, <laughs> at least while you're down here on Earth, make the best of it. So that's how I get through each day, just trying to do my best. I just put one foot in front of the other. Um, I go from there. I get up in the morning. And I just go. I walk. I get ready. Clothes. Shower. Brush my teeth. You know, I eat when I can. It's just hard every day. Because simple tasks before just second. It's just like, you know, you brush your teeth. Do your hair. Do your makeup. It's just so simple. But now it's like, okay, I got to talk to myself. Like, okay, put your clothes on. Brush your teeth. Brush your hair. Put your makeup on. Okay, get this. Grab that. Okay, put the key in the ignition. Okay, I'm talking to myself to get through everything because my mind is just, it's racing. It's everywhere. I just can't. It's hard. It's hard. And I know eventually it'll get easier. Hopefully, hopefully things kind of, I don't know, settle down. But I know I'm going to miss her until I see her again. And I understand. Like, I just understand a lot more about life. I just look at life differently. It's taught me so many things within a matter of weeks about how much irrelevant things is irrelevant. Like, petty little drama, it's just so irrelevant and not worth your time. You can't get time back. You can't get that back. So, have any advice for anybody watching this video... Whether if you lost your parent or you have both of your parents or anybody, your grandparents, uncles, cousins, friends, wives, husbands, boyfriends, girlfriends, nieces, nephews, cousin-in-law, brother-in-law, sister-in-law, whoever you have love for, tell them you love them. Tell them you care about them and show them you love them. You know, hug them, be there for them. When they call, answer, when they text, respond. Don't be too busy for your family and your friends. Because once they're gone, they're gone. So hopefully, um, it's a nice little video for people who are going through this. Just know you're not alone. <laughs> and I know I'm not alone. Um, leave comments below. You know, tell me your story. Let me know what you've been through. Let me know how you cope. Give me some tips. Because I can use all the tips right now to get through this time in my life. And... Okay, so I'll probably make another video maybe a little later about an update on how I'm doing and things like that. But like I said, if you like this video, just like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you're going through. We can all get through this together. Okay? Thank you guys for watching. Until next time. Bye-bye.